What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So we're gonna check out the new add location feature that's currently available in SketchUp Labs, see if it's better than the SketchUp location feature that we already have. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so at the moment, the current add location feature is still available in your main toolbar in SketchUp. But if you go to the SketchUp Labs page, you're gonna notice that not only do they have SketchUp Diffusion, which we've talked about, um, it's the AI rendering software, there's also a new add location tool in the extension warehouse. And so what this is, is this is a new version of add location that they're testing in SketchUp. So you can download this for free by going to the SketchUp extension warehouse within SketchUp itself. Note that I have no clue if any of these features have been uh, included in the web version or in the iPad version right now. Um, I've not checked on that. This is specifically an extension for the Pro version. So all you have to do is just look for Add Location, hit the Enter key, and you can see how there's the new Add Location function from SketchUp Labs right here. And you can take this and you can download this and install it. Note that it's currently only listed as compatible with SketchUp 2022 and SketchUp 2023. But we're gonna take this add-on and we're gonna click on the button for install in order to access this. All right, and so you can access this by clicking on the add location function right here. All right, so you're gonna notice that when you open this up, it's gonna look somewhat similar to the old add location, but also a little bit different. And so what this one is going to do is it's gonna allow you to pick a location. So you can navigate this by scrolling up or down with your mouse wheel. And so you can move what you can see in the map by clicking and dragging. And note that if you click and drag and your pin goes off of your screen, it's going to ask if your location is correct. So. In this situation, um, if I wanted my pen to be over here, I could move until we're kind of centered on this location right here. So say that we wanted to center on course field, you can click on the button to move the location pin and it's gonna recenter that pin in this location. Now, they also have a tool in here, which is a little bit interesting, which allows you to change your north offset. So what that means is that means that right now your north is straight up and down. But say that you wanted these roads running straight up and down. What you can do is you can click and drag this in order to change the north direction like this so that this would import this with these facing straight up and down. Now generally speaking, I'm not sure if I would use this. I mean usually I want north to be just straight up, but I, I guess bringing this in and being able to align things like these uh, these roads to more of a straight up and down is something that I would consider helpful in some situations. Now another interesting feature that we have in here is the option to show your model. And so what that's going to do is let's say that we had a big model in here. So I'm just going to draw model like this. And I think you may have to close and open this in order for this to work, or maybe you can just toggle it there. Yeah, you can toggle it to get it to show up. But notice how that model that I created in here is now going to show up. So if I add some detail to this, like this, and then I toggle that off, and toggle it on, notice how it's showing me the footprint of that model and how big it is, which is actually kind of helpful because you can see um, how your model would sit on a site, other things like that. So notice how I can click and drag this and this is gonna kind of move along here. So say that I was gonna add a building to this, uh, this parking lot right here. Well, I can kind of click and drag this in order to set that location. So that's definitely kind of interesting. Um, and then we also have the ability to change our map type between just like a simple map and a satellite view right here. But then once we're done, and by the way, you could type in an address in here as well. But once we're done, we can click on the continue button and it's gonna pop up this window right here, which allows me to set what I'm going to bring in. So in this situation, notice how I can click and drag like this in order to pick my location. And you've got all these different handles that you can drag on, but then you've got the ability to import either the 3D terrain or the 2D plane. And so the 2D plane is just gonna bring in flat model data. So this is just gonna be flat. The 3D terrain would bring in the actual 3D terrain. Now, one thing I'm not sure about, and we can test this in a second, is I'm not sure if it'll bring in both if I pick the 3D terrain. But you can also pick between the Bing data and the digital globe 
data. So notice how if I click in here, um, I can switch back and forth between them and see which ones are going to be more detailed. In this case, I'm liking the Bing a little bit better. But now, if I pick import site context, what that's gonna do is that's going to bring in your data like this. And depending on how big this is, this will take longer or less long because it's bringing these in as different, uh, as different little squares in here. But for now, let's return to SketchUp. And so when I return to SketchUp, what that's gonna do is that's gonna close this down and it's going to import that data. Um, and notice how it brought this data in and it aligned it up and down, but we've got a little bit of a cutoff here just because of the angle that we had in here for our north offset like this. But if we go and look at this, this just brought this in as geolocated content and it only brought in the 2D plane, not the three dimensional data um, right here. But now if I click on this button right here, notice how this is going to show me what I've brought in and I can click on this button right here to add more context. And so when I add more context, notice what that's going to show me is that's going to show me where I've brought in data already and it's going to allow me to select where I bring in additional data. And notice how I'm kind of locked to this location right here, but I can click and drag in order to make this bigger and bring in that data. So if I do that, kind of bring in a 2D plane. So say we do this again, it's going to bring in more of this geographical data and it's going to add it to that context. Now, if I go back to SketchUp right here, I've now got that additional context in here. Now, one thing I'm not sure about is if we look at the hidden geometry right here, um, it looks like this is kind of bringing this in and adding it to that original geolocated content. So if I unlock this right here, it doesn't look like it brought it in as two separate things. It looks like it added it to the original plane that we had in here. Oh, here's what it did. So it brought it in with two different imports. So notice how your import one and your import two are in here. So if I toggle off my import one and on my import two, it did kind of put these on top of each other right here. So you do have kind of doubled up geometry like this. So that is something that's worth being aware of. But part of the reason that it did that is because I click and drag this out to the point where it was bringing in this additional information that was inside of my original footprint. Now, one thing that I'm not sure about, we can try it right here. Say that we wanted to bring in 3D terrain in this location. You could just click and drag this over and notice how this is going to snap to this location. Say I did want that terrain Notice how I can click on the button for import site context and it's going to bring this in. Now bringing in the 3D terrain is gonna take longer than the two dimensional terrain because it's bringing in different um, and more data. So notice how this is going to bring in 17 different squares and make them into 3D terrain. So we'll let this work for a minute and then we'll come back and take a look at the result that it creates. All right, and so when you're done with this, this is gonna tell, tell you that your context is now available in SketchUp. So now if I jump back into SketchUp right here, notice how I have two different imports in here. So I've got the import of my 2D plane that we brought in here before. And then I've also got a three dimensional terrain import. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my hidden geometry because that's showing a lot of geometry and slowing SketchUp down. But if I take this and I remove the 2D plane right here. And so this is interesting. It's bringing in the 3D terrain data right here and kind of draping it over the surface. So, and we'd obviously see this better if I'd picked a hillier area, but this did definitely bring that terrain in. And if we look at our mesh, um, and look at our hidden geometry right here. This is really heavy geometry right here. I'm not sure where they're getting it, but it's definitely a very dense mesh. Let's try bringing in the old data and seeing what it does. So I'm gonna to toggle off hidden geometry. We'll go back into shaded mode right here, but let's bring in that same location using add location, um, the original. Anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on select region and we're gonna set this to bring in this data right here. And notice how the old version doesn't allow you to rotate or anything like that. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna import this. This is gonna bring in a bunch of tiles, um, but that's probably okay. Uh, we'll just let it work for a little while and then see what it comes up with. Maybe I'll make this a little bit smaller to reduce the tile count. But I'm gonna click on import 
And so that old data came in a lot faster, but it does appear to be less detailed. Um, so if I look at the hidden geometry in here, yeah, notice how this mesh is significantly less dense than the old mesh. Now there's pluses and minuses to that, right? Because if I toggle my location terrain back on right here, it does look like the new terrain data is a lot more detailed than the old terrain data. So that's a definite plus in the sense that you're getting more information on your terrain import. I would say the minus is this mesh is like super dense. I'd like to see an option to be able to reduce the density of this mesh if we wanted to do that, just because this is like giant. Um, so there's just a ton of geometry in this item. So if I look at just this corner, right here of this geolocated data. There's 180,000 entities in here. And I'll bet you if I toggle back into the old data, so I'm gonna toggle this terrain off and I'm gonna unlock this one and triple click on it. Yeah, notice how there's only 12,000 entities in this entire item right here. So this new mesh is super dense, which I think could probably slow down SketchUp depending on how much data you bring in. So it would be nice to have some kind of a control over here when you bring this in to control how heavy that mesh is. But having this additional, more detailed terrain is definitely welcome in my opinion. It would just be nice to have a little bit of control over what's created. And then if you can't get the little icon to hide, I think you can just go to view and toggle off the location pin right here in order to get that to go away. So um, we can toggle that on and off in order to get that location pin off of our screen. All right, so that's kind of an overview of the new add location feature. I like it. I think that it does a good job and gives you a little bit more control. Like I said, the one thing would just be getting a little bit more control over the size of the mesh that's created when you bring in the 3D terrain. But overall, I think it's a good addition because it makes adding additional tiles a little bit easier and it gives you control over the direction that you can bring in. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about this tool? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.